Carl again today. Um, I want to introduce you to my review today of the um, railroad version of the Mallard. It's a steam locomotive and it's the uh, model number 3395 TTS. Uh, the R3395 TTS. Uh, so this is a uh, one of the, it's actually the first um, Hornby TTS locomotive, uh, steam locomotive that I've ever owned. Um, it has an equivalent stable mate uh, called the Gadwell, so this is the Mallard. Uh, and in the same class is another locomotive called the Gadwell, and you may see that one for sale as well, uh, with the TTS offering also. This model actually comes in both TTS and non-TTS form. What I really would highly recommend the TTS version. I, I think, again, the cost difference is pretty small. Uh, it's of the order of about 20, 25 pounds. And that's that's less than the cost of the decoder. And it, it is a little bit more complex to install a TTS decoder into a steam locomotive um, in general. So I really would recommend uh, get the pre-installed TTS out the gap. So this is the first of two reviews I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do one of, of this, the Mallard, which I think is a very historic locomotive in the world of steam and in the world of railways in general, uh, which one of the reasons I was interested in, in running this. And the other one is going to be the Flying Scotsman, which again, a very famous locomotive, very well known, and uh, a very popular locomotive in the Hornby range for many, many years. Obviously available from other vendors as well. Uh, but both of these are in the railroad um, uh, budget range from Hornby, if I call it that. Um, they both have TTS on board. And um, I was quite curious to see uh, just, you know, how they performed, what they look like, what they sound like. Uh, I have a, a certain degree of interest in steam. Uh, my, my preference would probably be on the diesel side. Uh, but I have an interest uh, going back many years and... Uh, really, I decided to try these two out, and so I'll share my experience with both locomotives over the next number of reviews. So, um, looking forward to taking a look at this. Uh, steam is new for me uh, in general, and uh, uh, both just the running of this and the, the sound effects, etc., uh, will be new as well. So, we're going to get this guy, let's get him out of the box here, and we'll take a closer look, and we'll kind of bring him through uh, the normal review process that. I would follow for any of the other locomotives. So pretty standard type packaging for any of the railway, railroad locomotives. They come in this uh, styrofoam packaging uh, with the cover on the top. Um, does have a nice uh, little plastic sleeve in here, which I do kind of like. This, this kind of helps bed the locomotive into the polystyrene, provides a little bit of extra protection and also facilitates its removal. So uh, I do quite like that. Um, uh, that type of effect. It, it's maybe not in the same class as the Hornby packaging for their, you know, their mainstream, um, you know, more expensive locomotives. Uh, but then this doesn't have the same level of detail as those locomotives, and obviously it's at a different price point. Uh, so for what it is, it is perfectly adequate. So I, I don't really have any issues with the packaging uh, at all. Uh, the documentation is pretty well the standard that you get with any. Hornby locomotive, uh, you get the main data sheet uh, which talks about uh, the general maintenance uh, for the locomotive. Uh, also talks about installation of DCC and so and, and lubrication. And I think if you were, um, you know, again, you don't have to worry about this, uh, the DCC side of things if you've already purchased it, the TTS version because it's already installed, so you don't have to worry about that piece. Uh, there is a detailing kit actually uh, just on the back. Uh, which it's easy to miss. Um, they talk about um, just installing that here. That's actually covered off in the sheet here. So that's just an extra thing that you people may not notice actually. Right. Um, next thing is then the actual manual for the sound. And this is in line with uh, all of the Hornby TTS uh, sound manuals. And if you've been on, uh, seen any of my other reviews, you'll know that I'm, I'm quite happy with what they provide here. I think it's a good level of detail. Uh, you get all the sound functions. Uh, there's no lighting here, obviously, so you're really you're talking about sound and engine control. Um, uh, going up to F18, so that's a pretty generous uh, spread of sounds, and we'll get to hear those later on when we we do a run out. 
Uh, and really what I do like is it gives you some of the basic uh, control variable uh, values and, um, and, and, where, and, and where they're located and what they do. So you can customize the settings uh, yourself depending on, on preferences. Uh, so this is good and I, I say I'm quite frustrated with other vendors who don't provide that level of detail out of the box. A lot of other information in here um, in terms of the, uh, the detail and if you did want to connect in other accessories or put in some lighting for example uh, th that information is actually provided in this sheet so um, it's really just like a, the equivalent of I suppose this is kind of four A4 sheets here um, but, uh, that level of information but I think this is the kind of detail I would expect to get with any sound locomotive and I think it's, it's well covered off here so again uh, this is good by Hornby and I'm very pleased with that so standard data sheet uh, and everything that you'd expect from the, the sort of data you get with a Hornby TTS decoder. Okay, so I think the next thing is let's get this guy out of the box and take a little closer look at him and, uh, and we'll go to the next stage of the review. Okay. Okay, we've got the uh, our mallard out of the box and uh, we can start to take a bit of a closer look at this locomotive. Uh, it is from the railroad range, so I think expectations in terms of the level of detail has to be kind of tempered by that. Uh, however, it is still a good looking uh, locomotive. Uh, this is a nicely put together package. Uh, you can just see, I, I have the two of them coupled here, uh, there is the wiring running in between here, uh, between the decoder and the main uh, engine, decoder and speaker being mounted in, in the rear here. Um, and I suppose that that's what you get out of the box uh, and I suppose the good news is that you don't have to go fiddling uh, with any installation etc for the sound capability so one of the advantages of getting these locomotives is they're uh, essentially ready to run out of the box with the, with the sound capability uh, built into them. Um, so there is I would say a, a reasonable level of detail on this model uh, it does actually even up front have the spring buffers which is a kind of a feature I didn't expect to see on a railroad uh, model. Uh, it's got some nice piping detail along the top there, rail uh, running around the top and running around the back. Um, overall the, it's a, ni a nice paint job. Um, nice little line painting across the, the front chimney there. Uh, a good bit of detail overall. A nice weight in the body of the locomotive itself. And um, nice detail around the wheels here and there. You can see the wheels are actually kind of a red, uh, brownie red paint on them which is nice as well um, and um, a kind of not, again not a, a bright coloured, uh, the, the little bars here but connecting the wheels uh, are all a slightly darker colour as well. So it, it is a quite a nice package. Um, the, the rear tender here is a little bit on the light side so um, that's just the only proviso um, that I would say. Uh, but overall, uh, a, a nice looking locomotive, um, you know, not not spectacular. Um, it, this is a railroad unit, this is a, you know, a budget priced model. Uh, so I think for where it sits, I think it's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. I, this, I, I purchased this as a, as a budget offering. Uh, I'm not, uh, I would say, an avid steam uh, modeler. And I think if you were, you may be disappointed perhaps. Uh, but for for what you're, what I was looking for, uh, this meets all the needs, and uh, I'm very well pleased with it. And as we'll see later on, it it look it looks well on the layout as well, and um, looks pretty authentic. So uh, overall, uh, not not I wouldn't say in any way disappointed by it. I think it is a good good enough level of detail here. A nice looking locomotive um, meets the expectations I would have had, and I think the next thing now really is let's get it out and see how she performs and uh, see how she sounds. Okay, so we'll join me for in the next section uh, to do a run out uh, on our layout. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, we'll get going very quickly here. There's no major startup sequence for this particular locomotive like you get with the diesels. Uh, literally, the sound just comes on, the, the starting engine sound. Uh, there's no major startup sequence that you'd normally get. Um, which is maybe a bit disappointing, I'm not sure how close to the mark that is, but uh, that's just the way it is. 
So I do have a separate video which goes through all of the sound effects on the locomotive. So I'll put a link to that in the description and that basically steps through all of those uh, effects and you can listen to them on that video. So we're going to get moving here really is just to get a feel for how the locomotive runs, how it looks, and get a feel for the sounds as it's running. And also we're going to start here relatively slowly but we'll build up the speed as we go and I'll uh, get this thing up to uh, probably pretty close to top speed. Uh, just a word about the coaches uh, that I'm using today. I'm using a rake of five Hornby Mark 1 brown and cream type coaches, uh, which would be pretty accurate in terms of uh, going with this type locomotive. There's other options as well. Again, I'll put the details of the different coach numbers uh, in the description for you. I'll add that to the description. Uh, in case you're interested, uh, I picked these up relatively cheaply actually from, uh, from Hattons and uh, they seem to fit in very well here with this particular, uh, particular loco. Now I'm sorry to speed things up a bit here and uh, give you a feel how this guy runs at speed. And you know, it is a very good runner. I mean, um, I didn't have any issues over points um, with the locomotive, even at low speed. Probably had one little glitch with the short on a on an express point but i've had that with other locals as well and it really that was just when i was starting out uh, in running her in uh, i didn't have any during the, the course of this particular testing here uh, so she seems to take all of the various points and diamonds and all those things uh, in her stride which is good so again we're speeding things up a little bit more now uh, getting up over the mid speed range and it is a good good performer good sound You know, that is, uh, this is a uh, as an entry level locomotive uh, with, with sound capability. I, I think it's it's hard to fault it. So we'll keep uh, ramping up the speed here as we go. I'm not going to go all the way to 100% speed on this particular run. Uh, I've only just run in this locomotive, so it is early in its life cycle. Uh, so I'm just going to hold back from uh, going right up to the top speed. Uh, but hopefully you'll get a feel from um, from this run out here, just, just how good a, a performer it is at speed. I have to say, I do think uh, for steam locomotives, uh, the TTS sound is probably a little bit more limiting. Uh, there's a lot more going on potentially uh, with uh, a steam locomotive sound-wise. Uh, so I think it probably would benefit from the full DCC treatment and um, just give you those extra options in terms of sounds. Uh, you are limited to two sounds, obviously, with, uh, with the TTS at any, at any given time. Uh, and that can be a little bit limiting, I think. So if you're running a horn, for example, and you're actually running the engine, that's your two sounds consumed. You've got no uh, capability to run any other sounds during that time, such as a, a brake sound or a, 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 a squeal sound. Yeah, we're getting right up to top speed now, so uh, around 90% uh, of top speed, I should say. And uh, it's a it's a flyer. Again, no problems, no derailment, no issues over the points. Very solid running. I'm running on a radius 3 curve here. I think the lowest you want to run this island is probably a radius 2. I have run on a radius 1 at lower speeds, uh, without any issues, so... Uh, just in case that took maybe something I want to run around, but I think radius 2 is generally recommended. So we're just going to come to the end of the run now. Uh, we'll just give you a feel for this locomotive slowing down, uh, what it might uh, look and sound like. And again, you know, it's 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 smooth, it's it's good, and uh, really no issues. So overall, uh, a pleasing run for, you know, what is a, a budget locomotive. I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, so uh, let's get into the summary section of this review. So we've been reviewing the Hornby R3395 TTS, also known as the Mallard. Now, it's important to note that there was an earlier version of a very similar A4 class locomotive, again, with the same livery, 
uh, called the Gadwell. And again, I'll put a, a little bit of a note in the description on this. So this is effectively the same locomotive, uh, just with the different name and numbering. Uh, so if, uh, if you do see the Gadwell available, and it's usually available probably at a slightly cheaper price, uh, it's equivalent in terms of all of the features, functions, and the, the look of the locomotive. So just uh, an important to note that. Uh, so this is an A4 class steam locomotive uh, with the 462 uh, wheel type uh, configuration and carrying the, uh, the famous Mallard name. It does have factory installed uh, TTS digital sound. It's the 8-pin uh, TTS decoder that's installed here. And there's a total of 18 sound functions and I've captured those uh, a list of those in the description. In terms of extra features, it really doesn't have a lot of extra features. It has uh, surprisingly frontal spring buffers, which is kind of unusual for a railroad uh, model. Uh, but apart from that, that that's pretty well it. And, and that's not to be uh, su uh, surprising because this is a budget uh, railroad budget model. If you want to get those extra features, you're going to have to pay for them with a, a more expensive model. Uh, retail pricing is in that kind of 119 to 139 uh, pounds uh, level. There is also a non-TTS version of this which typically sells for, for between 20 to 30 pounds less than the TTS version. So uh, that might be something of interest but my recommendation is to go with the TTS installed. Trying to uh, retrofit sound into this locomotive is just a lot of extra work for you and I don't think I, I would like to undertake it. I wouldn't personally wouldn't like to undertake it myself because it is a little bit more complicated than adding to a diesel because you've got that interconnect between the tender and the main uh, the main locomotive to deal with as well. So so there is an option if you want to get the cheaper version or if, if somebody gives it to you for, as a present, for example, then you can up, you can buy the upgrade uh, module and uh, add TTS sound to, to this locomotive. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the scorecard. And I've rated this uh, using the same sort of scoring criteria as I use for any of my other diesel locomotives that I have reviewed. And I'll maybe talk around that a little bit because it is a slightly different offering. It is a steam locomotive, so there are differences there. And it obviously comes from the railroad range. It is a budget range. I'm giving it uh, four stars in terms of performance and appearance. Um, and in scoring, it's just under, under the four stars, but I'm kind of rounding it up. Uh, I think it deserves it because um, it does look pretty good. Uh, I think this locomotive does look pretty good appearance-wise. It doesn't have a lot of extra detail, so uh, which I'd have captured under the extra features, which you can see has got a very low score. And so appearance and, and performance-wise, it is good. Now, it does fall a little bit on the low speed end. It wouldn't be as smooth as its more expensive uh, brethren, but uh, it does perform well. And uh, in, in general, for an entry-level user, it is perfectly fine and um, and considering the, the costs involved it is a very low cost locomotive so I, i'm giving it good scores there uh the sound uh, three and a half stars uh, it is it does suffer a little bit because it is tts only and you don't have the flexibility of a full uh, dcc sound uh, capability so that that certainly takes a little bit from it and uh, there's one or two little quirks uh, when I was running the locomotive where um, you get little gaps in the sound. So um, so three and a half star, it still is quite good. And I think from uh, what you saw there on the run out, uh, it, it's a pretty impressive uh, sounding uh, locomotive. And, and I, I'm you know pretty pleased with it. Uh, you know, you have to balance everything in terms of the cost here. So three and a half star, I think, is a fair score and a good score for this uh, particular locomotive. As I said, it doesn't really have any extra features. It does have the spring buffers, and that's really about it. Uh, there is a, a small detailing kit as well included, but nothing else uh, in terms of any significant added features. So you really got to pay more to get those. Packaging documentation are fine. And so overall, uh, I'm giving it a four star. Maybe I'm being a little bit generous, but I do think um, it, it, it is a re recommended offering. If you're a steam enthusiast and uh, you, you, you're looking for a high-end locomotive, well, you need to look elsewhere. But if you're somebody uh, who's looking for, you know, an entry level in, into the steam area, you want to get sound with it, um, I don't think you have to look much further. This is a, a pretty good offering. And uh, and similar to the, the next locomotive I'm going to review, which is the, the Flying Scotsman, I would put it in the same sort of category. Um, you know, this is... Um, a good looking motor, uh, locomotive, a good runner, and uh, lots of fun. Um, so I, I can't fault it from that perspective, and hence it is a recommended rating, you know, with the proviso that it is a budget offering. And as I said, if, if you're a, a more of an enthusiast in the, in the steam area, then you probably need to look elsewhere to, uh, you're going to probably have to pay more as well. And particularly to get sound, you're going to have to pay more. So 
uh, but a good offering a recommended offering and uh, very pleased with it so uh, if you see these on the market or if you see the the gadwell which uh, the equivalent version uh, which is usually slightly lower cost then i i would heartily recommend these you know within the boundaries of of, of what i've just described okay so I hope this uh, review was of use today. I, as I said, I am going to be completing a review for the Flying Scotsman, very similar uh, type of locomotive. Uh, so watch out for that review that's coming up. If uh, you're not a subscriber, uh, please hit the subscribe button. I have lots more reviews to do in the coming months. Uh, so if you want to get notifications on those, please, uh, please click uh, subscribe and click the notification button. Uh, hopefully you got uh, some value out of today's review and I hope to see you on uh, one of these reviews in the near future. So uh, thanks for watching today and happy modeling.